located 60 kilometres off Exmouth in Western Australia and within Australian Commonwealth waters, lies the Laverda Canyon, Norton over Laverda and Chamati oil accumulations. Thanks to the Greater Enfield Project, these reserves now deliver oil via a 31-kilometre subsea tieback to the Nujima Yin Floating Production Storage and Offloading Facility, or FPSO, situated over the Vincent Oil Field. Also known as the Greater Enfield Development, or GED, this project was undertaken by Woodside Energy Limited, 60%, in association with its joint venture participant, Mitsui E&P Australia Proprietary Limited, 40%, a total investment of approximately 2.5 billion Australian dollars. The project kicked off when the final investment decision was approved in June 2016 to develop the three oil accumulations with a target for first oil around mid-2019. The project required developing six subsea production wells and six water injection wells. Production will be supported by subsea multi-phase booster pumps in the Laverda area and gas lift in the Chimati area. HSC was fundamental for the project with the objective to drive safety leadership and performance at all levels. And everyone at the end of the day had to make a health and safety commitment on what they were going to do on the project. We really needed the leaders to take ownership of health and safety in their area so that we achieved good safety performance. The primary safety and environment risks were related to the subsea installation, drilling and completions located not far from the Ningaloo Reef and the modifications to the new Jima Yin FPSO in Singapore. Some of the health and safety risks we face in this project is the complexity of the project. We're actually dealing with a lot of different moving parts and some of them is technical in nature in some of the things that we haven't done in the industry before. We had just about every different type of subsea equipment that you could have, horizontal subsea trees. We had a multi-phase pump. We have two rigid pipelines, flexible flow lines, and umbilicals. So pretty much just about every type of subsea equipment that you could see in this sort of development. The manufacture of the multi-phase pump components, along with the fabrication of the pump station and control module, were completed in Bergen, Norway and Paris, France, respectively, with the production system control umbilicals manufactured in Newcastle in the United Kingdom. The 32-kilometre power umbilical for the multi-phased pumps was manufactured at Nexens in Holden in Norway. The multi-phase pump used on the Greater Enfield project uh, was Australia's largest and a, a first in Australia with a qualified high-voltage motor. The flexible flow lines were manufactured at Technip FMC's Asia Flex facility in Malaysia. The one subsea Christmas trees, wellheads and connectors were manufactured and tested in Johor, Malaysia prior to mobilisation to Australia. The collaboration with Woodside worked really well. We often talk amongst other joint ventures how Woodside is a great operator in terms of their inclusiveness, bringing us in to give us a detailed picture, the technical understanding of what's going on. The most exciting parts of my job were to deliver the project within the budget. I believe that in this project, Woodside and Mitsui has a really great relationship and it's kind of a one JV approach. That approach is one of the key for success. The 92 metre tall ENSCO DPS-1 after significant enhancements and refurbishment in Singapore, arrived in the field. Some of the biggest challenges on the project were trying to 3D geosteer through very thin reservoirs for long intervals up to 2,000 metres, and sometimes going out of reservoir and then finding the reservoir again, which was quite unique to the project. The most exciting part for me was when we're drilling these horizontal wells that are enormously long, they're up to two kilometres long and all of the geology is falling into place. It looks exactly as we planned. What I enjoyed most was working with the team and especially when we had challenges on the multilateral wells. Just everyone got together, came up with a solution and we were able to deliver those wells. A late change to the drill rig from moored to dynamically positioned meant that we could also change our installation methodology. So instead we installed our Christmas trees off a subsea construction vessel, the Fugro Ateef, and by doing that we were able to remove 28 days of schedule from the rig. We were always conscious that we were operating up near the Ningaloo Reef, which is a World Heritage Area, and it's so beautiful. We left that marine environment in perfect condition just as we found it, so we're uh, really proud of that achievement. The most exciting part of the project for me was um, enabling the project 
to interface with the Exmouth community. Exmouth is a community that we've had a long-standing relationship with for the past 10 to 15 years and Greater Renfield will allow this relationship to grow for another 10 years. The Najimi Inn had been running for 11 years uh, prior to leaving for Singapore. Uh, the facility obviously operates the Vincent Field and Greater Enfield expansion was to include additional subsea tiebacks which meant we needed to go to shipyard for some topside modifications. The Abel, Woodside and Keppel teams then commenced the upgrade work on the new Jimmy Yin in Singapore in May 2018. Additional upgrades included a 1,400 tonne customised water flood or CWF unit to drive the oil reservoirs. One of the biggest milestones that stands out is the day we did the lift on the CWF package and we brought her in and we had to work out how the vessel was going to sit and load. And going through what we went through to get that landed on the, uh, on the facility. So it was probably a, a, a highlight when they actually landed safely and in the right spot with no incident, it was good. A key component to the upgrade was a new crane with a 55 metre boom to ensure the FPSO can reach Woodside's new LNG powered supply vessel, the CM Tima. The major refit constituted a mammoth operation by any standards. All this was preceded by nearly three years of engineering and procurement at Abel in Singapore. We're five months out of shipyard and we find out that there's three kilometres of piping that needs to be replaced and about 150 valves. So we develop a team of people from the wood organisation, the Keppel construction guys and our own internal team within Woodside. And I think the most exciting part was when we'd actually come off the critical path, remove the three to five month potential delay and business as normal in the shipyard so we had no impact on the project at the end, which was brilliant. We've worked incredibly hard as a team you know, and it is all about the team that gets the results to make sure we stay together, we were collaborative, we work together as a joint team through it all to make sure we got the desired outcome. We had a mantra that we worked by all the way through the project. Uh, today's quality is tomorrow's process safety uh, and that really meant that we was focused on quality as a key enabler to deliver a, a better, safer outcome. While this was underway in Singapore, Back in Australia, wells were being drilled and the necessary subsea equipment installed for greater infield. The subsea and pipeline teams, collaborating with Technip, FMC, One Subsea, Fugro and Dof Subsea, carried out the offshore construction work with six different installation and dive support vessels. Installation of the carbon steel production flow line and the major 160 ton end termination structures was successfully completed by Technip FMC's G1201 pipeline vessel in May 2019 after a three month campaign. The Deep Orient vessel then installed the 35 reels of flexible flow lines, forming the 25 kilometre subsea network connecting all of the production and water injection wells to the riser location at the new Jimmy Yin submerged turret production buoy. Off of the North Sea Atlantic, we were primarily installing umbilicals, including the 32 kilometre power and communications umbilical to the MPP pump station. As well as that, we installed the pump station itself, which was one of the most significant lifts of the campaign. Another challenging operation was installing the flexible water injection riser and the innovative floating flexible water injection flow line that crossed the one kilometre wide Laverda subsea canyon. The Southern Star was the final vessel as part of this construction campaign. Off of the Southern Star, which is a dive support vessel, we were tying in the water injection flexible riser as well as the two umbilical risers to the existing Najimian submersible turret buoy. While this was underway in Australia, back in Singapore... The way that it all came together was just incredible. I think everyone was there to really just get the job done. What that meant was banding together and learning from each other and respecting each other's expertise. I enjoyed working with the people. To work with the contractor in their office and ultimately follow the design into the shipyard to oversee or support construction and commissioning. Everybody got involved, everybody was willing to learn, everybody did learn and it gave me great satisfaction that everybody went home safe. The performance as the team, in my view, has been nothing short of outstanding. Through some difficult circumstances and challenges, they've continued to work together, look positive, stay enthusiastic, and deliver what has been a perfect HSE outcome with no recordable incidents over the 4.8 million hours. With the marathon refurbishment and fit-out completed, 
New Jimmy Yin headed back home to the Vincent oil field off the northwest cape of Western Australia. We feel a great sense of ownership receiving her back now, knowing that we've had input into some of those scopes and knowing how much effort they've put in in shipyard to give us a better product than what we gave to them before the project started. This project is the one where I've seen the best collaboration and working together ethos between the project and the asset teams. That for me was the most exciting part because the way to deliver outstanding outcomes is to have everybody working towards the same goal. Following New Jimmy Yin's return to station, the integrated offshore completions, commissioning, startup, operations and maintenance teams completed a carefully planned sequence of activities to restart Vincent production on the 4th of July. This was followed by the commencement of water injection to the Greater Enfield Wells on the 17th of July and flowing first GED oil to the FPSO on the 25th of August within days of the planned setback at FID back in 2016. The most exciting part was getting to go offshore and executing the startup and bringing the six production wells on and the six water injected wells online. We've got six producing wells producing around 60,000 barrels a day or greater from day to day. We produce a total of 3 million barrels to date and our water injectors are injecting the water and keeping the reservoir pressure up and the facility is getting to a steady state condition so very excited about that for them. We were able to drill the world's longest water injection well um, which was an amazing record for Woodside and for our team. For me the most exciting part was being involved in the drilling and completion of the horizontal wells. We were targeting thin reservoirs complicated by faulting and structural complexity and we were able to successfully drill and complete all of our wells in these challenging reservoir conditions. I think the most exciting part was finally getting all the wells in the ground. It was a long road, probably about a two year campaign and to see all those wells get in the ground was fantastic. The wells were delivered 100 days ahead of schedule. What I enjoyed most about the project was uh, just the camaraderie and the team spirit throughout. Everyone couldn't do more for each other and that team spirit was what really pulled us through both the tough times and the enjoyable times and you know, when we got to celebrate those milestones with each other it was a real uh, sense of achievement. This was another great team and I uh, just really enjoyed myself being able to be part of that team and represent that team on a number of occasions and deliver what we've delivered. The exciting part was actually executing the work in the field and just seeing all that planning come together what the team was able to exhibit through dealing with that scope and that challenge was you know outstanding behavior the relationships the behaviors the collaboration and teamwork that was shown by this team they're the types of things that we need to capture and absolutely roll into our forward projects